So, Pittsburgh got an extra week to prepare for us. And the Eagles are going in there, let's be real, at half power offensively at least. Hey, man, it is what it is. And at the end of the day, got to find a way to get a W against a team like Pittsburgh. All right, y'all, let's get it. What's up, Eagles Nation? What's going on, NFL World? How you doing, Division Rivals? This is Steven Heider with Gate City Sports Channel. The sports channel where the cerebral NFL fan comes for about 10 minutes of daily content. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Whenever it is you get around to watching this, guys, once again, my name is Steven Heider. This is Gate City Sports Channel. All right, y'all, uh, today's topic. We're going to do a little game preview here. We're going to talk a little bit about, you know, Philadelphia versus the Pittsburgh Steelers here. Look. I get your comments, Pittsburgh Steelers fans. I see them. I may not respond to them just because I'm not going to engage in ridiculousness. But I see the comments. Okay, yeah, you guys got Hayward. You got Bud Dupree. I think, I don't know if Watts in or out, guys. Um, I got to look that up. But, I mean, yeah, you, you've got a decent pass rush. You got a player in your secondary that I beat the tables for last year and said that the Eagles, I don't care what you got to do. Go figure it out and go get Minka Fitzpatrick. We didn't do it. You did. Minka Fitzpatrick is a difference maker. Howie Roseman, that was the one move. You guys can talk to me about OBJ and all these other moves. That, you know, I don't care about those moves. Minka Fitzpatrick would have made a difference in Eagles secondary. That one I care about. Um, Yeah, it, it's a good pass rush coming in here, guys. I mean, I'm not going to deny that. Like, the Pittsburgh Steelers have a really good pass rush. They look like a good football team, but I got my suspicions, though, too, guys. I'm going to be real. Who have you beat? Who have you beat? That's the thing. I think you're a good football team. I think Ben Roethlisberger makes a lot of difference for you guys. I think offensively you got some things going with James, you know, Connor and, and some of those guys in there. I, th I think you guys can play. I'm not trying to say you're not – I'm not trying to say you're not good. I'm trying to say that you might be better than – you might be a little over-advertised. That, that's my opinion. Look, I'm not going to come out here and beat my chest. I'm not that confident in the Eagles right now. I think we're starting to get our footing back together. But I'm not out here thinking like this is like, oh, come on, guys. We're upsetting this one. This one's an easy one to call. I'm not thinking that. I'm thinking you got one team that hasn't been tested yet. you got another team that's played like crap for most of the season. So, I mean, that's my perspective on these two football organizations right now. Um, For us, what do I think would be some of the keys to victory here? It's got to start defensively with the Eagles. I'm a little concerned that it doesn't look like Will Parks will be back. I don't think we activated him. Uh, that's concerning to me because there are some guys that we haven't activated. Now we're going into week five. I mean, at a certain point, it's like, dude, you took up roster spaces by not putting these guys essentially on, you know, the pup, the reserve pup. I mean, six weeks, you're going to bring them back anyways. What was the point of some of this crap? You should have put a few of these guys on the pup. What is another? What is one more extra week for Alshon? What is one more extra week for Will Parks? What is one more extra? You know what I mean? Like, come on, guys! Like, we got to be better at managing the roster with some of these things. Um, but defensively, guys, we, we've got to do stuff. We, we've got to be able to make plays defensively. The pass rush has got to get home. I think we'll have. I think. I think we'll have success against Pittsburgh. Okay, I'm not saying their their offensive line is trash because it's not. But what I am saying is this. Ben Roethlisberger and Carson Wentz have something very similar in common. These guys are gunslingers that will try to hold the ball to make a play. Some quarterbacks, when they face the Eagles, the reason it looks like our D-line isn't playing as good as it really is playing is because teams make a concerted effort to get the ball out of their hands fast when they play us. Not every team does that, and I think we're going to have another opportunity here against a veteran who likes to really sling the ball around to where he's going to try to make plays. So we might have an opportunity for one of these games where you get three or more sacks. Um, I think you got to get pressure on them. It doesn't have to be sacks, guys. You know, sacks are a nice statistic. Don't get me wrong, but pressure rate is way more important than sacks are. You got to keep pressure on them. You got to keep pressure on Ben Roethlisberger. We got to try to speed things up on him. It's not that he's going to make a mistake like he's some kind of rookie by speeding him up, but if you can speed him up and take away what he wants to do offensively, then that's going to matter. I think you have to do that. Darius Slay is the one guy defensively that me personally, I feel like I know. I know what's going on when I when I look at Darius Slay. I know I can depend upon Darius Slay, okay? Darius Slay might get beat a play or two. He's going to get it back together and he's going to go out there and compete. 
If I had to take a wild guess, I'm going to guess that Jalen Mills is bouncing back outside again as a corner. Outside corner, and they'll probably use Cravon LeBlanc here and there. Um, I think we should be very sparingly with our use of Cravon LeBlanc on the outside because I do think that he lacked foot speed to play out there. But the kid's a competitor. I, I, he's probably going to play a handful of snaps out there, I would imagine, too. Um, that probably means that we're going to be really shuffling around the safety room. I mean, McLeod had a freaking crazy game last week. I mean, McLeod was a real, real... I mean, he was a real difference maker with a pick, eight tackles. Like, I mean, McLeod really, you know, made you really think for a second. Like, Malcolm Jenkins, too? I'm joking there, guys. I'm not being honest, forthcoming there. But you get the point. He, he played like a leader. Um, we're going to have to depend upon some of these guys to, to really step up. Marcus Epps is going to have to step up, man. He's going to have to keep playing. I mean, he wasn't an Achilles heel last week. But I'm going to tell you this. In terms of the receiver core... I'm not saying San Francisco doesn't have talent out there. I mean, Brandon Ayuk, is, he's the real deal. But, you know, at Pittsburgh with Schuster and some of these other guys, I feel like they're, they're a much more... Uh, th this offense is better, I, I feel. Now, I do think that San Francisco does things with disguising stuff way better than Pittsburgh will. I don't think Pittsburgh is that type of team. But I don't know that they have the same, you know, receiving threats across the board that Pittsburgh does. So I do think that will be challenged a little more in that regard. Um, I don't know what to think about the linebackers, guys. We got the whole mess with Nate Gary and the stupid crap he said when he was a kid. I, I don't know, man. I hate getting involved in that kind of crap. I'm just going to let that be what it is. Um, Alex Singleton coming in. Alex Singleton, yeah, he can't be much worse than what we've been playing. I do think we'll miss TJ Edwards against the run. TJ Edwards is a pretty good run defender, guys. I do think we'll miss TJ Edwards out there, but... To be honest with you, we got guys like, you know, maybe this leads to Sean Bradley and some of these other young guys finally getting more reps. I mean, that's what I would like to see. I would like to see Sean Bradley get out there and play some. Uh, Davion Taylor, who you spent a third-round pick on. Like, I would like to see these guys, you know, we're five games into the season. I'm not asking for them to take over the majority of snaps, but we ought to be seeing them a little bit. Um, offensively, I don't know what you do, man. We're limited. I would like to see Hightower worked into the offense a little more because I really like what I see on film from Hightower, guys. Hightower might not be making five or six catches a game, but this kid's route running is next level, guys. Um, I pointed it out back when I broke down film on the kid, and I said, man, you know, we talked a lot about guys like Justin Jefferson and, you know, Van Jefferson and some of these other guys that I, you know, I said, hey, look, man, there are some really, really good route runners. I even took, pointed out how good Jalen Rager was at selling double moves. Jalen Rager is one of the best double move players in the league right now, flat out. Um, with that said, man, I think Hightower is just a really complete receiver. He's just got to gain the strength. He needs to put some of that frame on. He needs to add a little bit to the frame. And he's got to get a little stronger at the catch point. But the kid is a, a really good route runner, man. He, he gets separation, and that's a big thing. Um, I'll keep saying it. I don't know if Doug will listen to it. I don't know. I'm not going to predict that they'll do it. I'm not calling for the Eagles to go crazy with two back sets, guys. I'm really not. But man, you gotta you gotta make sure you're targeting Miles Sanders. You gotta make sure you're giving these teams pre snap motion. You gotta make sure that you're mixing things up, right? Like the way they disguised the sale route last week through a two back set thing. You gotta do stuff like that, man. I don't think you gotta go 10, 15 plays out of two back set, but you know, five to eight plays. Sure, mix it up, make things a little confusing on that defense, give them that pre-snap motion, get that inside zone blocking scheme going. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you, you got to do things, guys. I mean, you just can't be so vanilla that trying to, to run 11 and 12-man personnel when you're down. Yeah, look, look, I mean, let's just face it, guys. We're down Alshon. We're down Djax. We're down Rager. That's three right there. It's your three best receivers, hands down, okay? The next guys, you know, Dallas Goddard being down. Like, I mean, come on, man. You got to you got to play to the personnel you have available. And i got to tell you, man, Miles Sanders is a really good player to still have available. Zach Ertz is still a really good player to have available. Giant Hightower is showing stuff, guys. I think Giant Hightower needs to start becoming a little more focused there. I liked what I saw on Fulgham. I said Fulgham had good, strong hands. He, he made a lot of sense as a boundary side X receiver. I was right. I'd like to see Fulgham get mixed in more. Not, you know, like the deep plays, hey, I'll take every one of those. But... You know, also, the, the in and out routes, the comebacks, the hitches, the things that you see an X receiver do as a possession guy, he's got the frame for that. Let him do it. Let's see it. Um, JJ coming back. Look, man, if he doesn't produce this game, at what point do the Eagles just get it through their head that you got to pull the cord on this guy? 
Um, we'll see what happens. I'm rooting for the guy, man. I'm an Eagles fan, so that makes me a JJ fan. But I, as a guy who watches film, as a guy who's coached the position, like, come on, man. Like, just come on. That's all I'm going to say is just come on. Um, Greg Ward's going to play a role here, guys. Greg Ward is, whew, you talk about digging deep into your roster to find a guy. Man, Greg Ward was a smart guy to keep around Philly, and, dude, he's proven to be a really good slot receiver for the Eagles. Um, we'll see what happens, guys. Uh, Carson's got to be good. We can't have Carson out there creating turnovers, man. That's the one thing he cannot do in this game. He can't create turnovers. Move him around, get him out of the pocket. That would be my keys to the game. All right, y'all. Talk to me down below. Y'all tell me, what do you think of your keys to the game? Give me some things that you want to look. What are you looking for? What do you want to see? Who would you want the Eagle? Like I said, me, Ertz, Sanders, Scott, uh, Hightower, Fulgham. You got to work these guys in there. Uh, Richard Rogers, you got to get him involved in the offense. Like, you got to work these guys in. You got to play to the personnel you got. Uh, Wentz. I, I would get Wentz rolling him out again. Wentz is doing pretty good running the ball. Let him keep doing it. Uh, Jalen Hurts. I'd like to see Jalen Hurts get five to ten snaps in this game. He doesn't have to be under center. You can use him as one of these quarterback, running back things, whatever. You got to do things to keep this defense honest. All right, y'all. Down below, tell me what you think, man. Tell me what you guys are looking for. Peace. You know how we end these videos. We do a little E-A-G-L-E-S. Man, just get a victory. Just get two, two, and one. That's all I'm asking. I don't care if it's one point. I don't care. I don't care if it's a three to nothing game. Just give us the victory.